Welcome back to the family-friendly, cheerful world of nuclear devastation and monsters trying to eat your face at every corner. You may think this is a perfect setting for a heroic story of a parent searching for their kidnapped kid, forced to confront some mad scientists, solve mysteries and or hunt down cyborgs on the way. But I just want to open a restaurant. Like a really lovely place with great food, great music and a casino section, particularly the casino section. And once that's done, just want to make a lot of money off of my business venture, of course. This video is about building a successful restaurant in Fallout 4 then. I will pick a settlement with enough space to build a sizable building, but before that I will need a settlement that will allow me to farm a lot of water, carrots, radstack, yaogwai and finally Deathclaw. My restaurant has to serve Deathclaw steak, I decided, and I want to make money off of it, so I want high charisma, so I can actually sell food for a decent price, and also buy a lot of shipments, because there is a lot of building ahead. So I started by designing my character for a solid hour, I think, as you do. I decided to give her a cool name that at the time sounded like a super spy or a superhero sidekick, but then I realized it's basically the name of a Polish pop singer. I can't recall a single song from her, but apparently she's been living rent free in my subconscious for some reason for some time. God knows why. Surprised and cringing a bit, I assigned points to my specials. Here's the sheet. I made some mistakes, I will pay for them dearly later in the video. Most notably, I thought I would rely on sneak kills and companions so much I can completely dump endurance. That's just silly. I thought I was going to be very smart, sneaking up to the enemies, reverse pickpocketing caltrops into their pockets, which kills these suckers instantly. One small thing I forgot about is that you can only plant grenades or caltrops in enemies' pockets if you have pickpocket 2 and probably something like sneak 3 at least, else you are discovered before even getting close enough. Luck is at 3 because I wanted bloody mess. How unfortunate this is going to be a rather short play and all the money making perks will be more, way more important. So yeah, some points were wasted and I am about to gain a few new grey hair because of Endurance 1. Just lovely. For now Evelyn realized her husband has been killed and her son kidnapped. Happy, she's finally relieved of her responsibilities as a wife and a mother, she decided to pursue her two centuries old dream of running her own restaurant. You're the perfect mother! But first, she needs to climb out of the vault, reach sanctuary, loot sanctuary off of everything, then scrap as much of it as possible because wood, concrete and steel, tons of it, I really need. A rogue rad roach in a sanctuary provided me with my first level up which was used for the first rank in Sneak. Yep, Sneak and Pistols is built basically the entire build combat wise. It means it would be nice to find a silenced 10mm early. Spoiler alert, I won't find any for a long time. For now Codsworth cleared the bloat flies for me while I tried to figure out a suitable outfit. I found a pink dress which suits my personality perfectly. I mean my personality, not Evelyn's. She was quite happy in that suit. But the game decided I absolutely have to wear pink. This is just the first of four different laundered pink dresses I am about to find. You'd think it's mostly randomized what clothes you find in random loot, but not for this playthrough. For this playthrough it's mostly pink dresses. I will soon embrace it by painting my Pip-Boy and my Robot Butler pink. For the first time since my very first playthrough I decided to make my old home my new home. I need to do some soulless creation club quests to furnish it properly, but for now I used a modded bed and a fridge. Next day more scrapping, meeting the dog, even more scrapping, but this time at the red rocket, and using the resources from the red rocket to build a few water purifiers in the sanctuary, so I have a lot of water to sell when I finally get to Diamond City. For the commercial reasons I also also took Fortune Finder, as most of my money earned traditionally by selling ammo for example will be transferred to my building fund. Finally Concord. Considering I'm just a poor girl with a 10mm gun, a stray dog and a dream, on survival difficulty no less, it all went really swimmingly. Well except for that time when a raider did a jump scare on me and I learned the value of low watts cost of a 10mm. And of course, that moment when the game decided this is exactly this 1 in 10 times when the Deathclaw knows how to move through the doorframe of that abandoned store. Other than that it was great. 
Back to Sanctuary to get some easy experience by speedrunning the Sturgis' building tutorial and to boldly face the Preston Garveyism of Preston Garvey. He needs me to help a settlement in need of help, of course, but then Pines is mostly useless to me, so I have a counterpoint. Abernathy Farm. It has a Brahmin and therefore produces fertilizer from the get-go, therefore will allow me to make camps I can sell for shipments. So I went to Abernathy Farm. After a friendly small talk about farming and murdered daughters, I took all of their taters, as they need to be planted in sanctuary so that people there leave my carrots alone and let me use them for rat stack cages. I also took their bags of fertilizer to make camps. Before recovering the trinket for Abernathy's, I crafted some jet and went back to Concord to loot as much junk as I could carry and test the combat capabilities of Codsworth. Both a little bit of a waste of time, since I will soon have a scavenging settlement in Red Rocket and Codsworth is obviously awesome at this stage of the game. I know it already, I don't need any tests. It was nice. I was skirt shitless before entering satellite station Olivia. And for good reason. This is survival. I, for some reason, insist on wearing no armor and have the absolute minimum of hit points. So I died. A few times. But in my third or fourth attempt, I guess, I remembered sending Codsworth ahead to distract my enemies is an awesome strategy if Codsworth actually does as instructed, which is not a guarantee. But it worked like a charm this time around. The issue of US covert operations manual was a nice find too. I made a mental note to find more of them since it is a complete stealth build and this enhances your sneak. I of course forgot about it later and opted instead for collecting picket fences so I can build all the furniture in my settlements and of course it was exactly for the furniture I had never built. I am very smart. I also found a cute little backpack from Amod over there. Maybe it's cheating, but since the Creation Club backpack is way more OP and I play on survival, I consider myself excused. And finally, Satellite Station Olivia usually marks an important breakthrough in my playthrough, as it has my very first mini nuke. I never use a fat man, but it is important because I always take my first mini nuke and put it somewhere in my house for decoration. I honor the loving memory of Moira Brown this way, as she gave me my first mini nuke in my first Fallout 3 playthrough and therefore my first Fallout playthrough in general, and that mini nuke was also never fired and just stood there on a table in my house. Ok, so that's a turning point, but back to Sanctuary again to make my house a tad nicer, and then to Abernathy's to get my reward. And then on my way to Diamond City. Passing by Drumlin Diner provided me with an opportunity to use my impeccable charm and resolve the standoff situation peacefully, getting an extra trader for the rest of the playthrough. You stop waving that gun in my face, or it's gonna involve me. Okay, okay, just take it easy. We'll lower our weapons, alright? Just don't do anything crazy. I sold some of my goods and moved on. All of this activity has brought me to level 11 and my perks at the time were Sneak 2, Gunslinger 2, Pickpocket 1, which was a horrible idea for the reasons mentioned before, Fortune Finder 2, Inspirational 1, to get some more power out of my robot butler, and then Scrapper 1. Scrapper 1 is great if you need to build a lot and mod a lot, but I had an extra incentive. I run a mod that allows us to build specialized scavenger stations. Scavengers assigned to them will bring back components of a narrow selection of items so you have control over what they produce. For example, you can have a concrete scavenging station that produces concrete only, or a metal scavenging station that brings you copper, lead and uh, uh, something something else. The mod also increases the limit of scavenged items, because in vanilla the scavenging stations stop collecting items once you have 100 items in that workshop. It is a horrible limit and the mod requires that you have scrapper 1 before you can specialize your scavengers. So in a short playthrough like this one it almost doesn't feel like cheating. Anyway. I completely ignored Paladin Downs and his team because I really wanted to get to the big city already. I arrived just outside Diamond City in the middle of the night and as usual being under the fire of a bunch of angry Shreks. Then I had to endure a conversation with yet another angry Shrek and finally there, there was the city. I sold all my spare ammo and jet, easily nearing 5000 caps, but I also had to buy some shipments and visited the local clothing shop to buy myself a gorgeous hat. Sadly, Becky only had hats for boys and that made me feel really oppressed, so I bought 
myself a spiky piece of legendary armor and painted it pink to feel better about myself. Then I took all of their mute fruit because it's a very space efficient source of food. Now it was the perfect time to expand my array of furniture I can build by killing every raider in hardware town and picking up their magazine and then doing the same in combat zone. Hardware Town also had another nice thing to offer, a decent pistol, which I decided to paint red before doing anything else. Since I had to face the fact I most likely won't ever unlock Locksmith perk or hacker, it was a good idea to befriend Kate anyway and send her to Sanctuary just in case. Obviously, I want to keep my floating ball of death with me for now. As soon as possible, the ball of death will also get a hacking module and Kate is the locksmithing module, so I uh, should be more or less fine, I guess. Well, uh, you can't really uh, use a hacking module on Codsworth without mods, I have a little fix for that in my load order, and if you don't use mods or not too many mods, you will probably need to build yourself a separate new robot with a hacking module or use Ada for that. Speaking of my ball, if I ever want to properly upgrade Codsworth, I may need science, and for that I need one more point of intelligence, so I decided I need to grab the bubble head in the public library, preferably also getting paid for it, so I visited Good Neighbor to talk with a ghoul about it. Now this expedition will have to wait for a little bit because, well, the, there is the Valentine's Day for me. I entered the Park Street station being absolutely terrified as always. I expected a lot of reloads, but only one was necessary. It turns out the mix of sending Codsworth first and patiently waiting behind a corner for an opening solved most of my problems here. Vats was useful too, and at this point I have developed some superhuman reflex when it comes to activating VATS in a nanosecond after hearing any movement or any other sign of danger. It became even easier when the robot skeleton detective joined my party. How dare you! <laughs> he offered me his help in finding my son, but frankly I was there mainly for the speech, Bubblehead. I want some profits once I can finally cook my death glow steaks. Darla, listen to me. You have a home to go back to. You don't want to throw your life away with these thugs. I... I... You're right! What am I doing? But my dream restaurant also needs a wide offer of sweets and coffee, and for that I need to obtain Slocum Joe's blueprints from Creation Club, so I followed the quest marker that's been waiting for me and my pip boy all this time and went north. Some raiders on a bridge thought that a smiling cute housewife with a housekeeping robot at her side should be easy pickings, well this was the worst mistake in their lives. But luckily also the last mistake. On my way north I visited Bunker Hill and was tempted by Cricket into buying her explosive toy, but I have a style to maintain and a rifle or an automatic rifle has no place in it. I reached the place with Donut Fryer and a coffee maker blueprints, eliminating the happy family of raiders there without breaking a sweat. A few steps further to the north I found a rather useful legendary 10mm pistol. I have my 10mm decently modified at this point, so this find made me drop everything and return to Sanctuary to move all my mods from the OG pistol onto this one. While at it I built a brewery, or rather a distillery plant from a mod called Manufacturing Extended. It allows me to make my own alcoholic beverages, including vodka, which has become my drink of choice because it gives me a few extra HP and with my path endurance I will take whatever the game gives me. The vodka buff will be stacking with many other consumable buffs from donuts and coffee, which I think constitutes a perfectly balanced and healthy diet. On a side note, donuts are overpowered, which is the most realistic feature of Fallout 4. There is one donut in that creation that doubles your sneak attack damage bonus, which is a very rare buff and very very useful for a character like this. And the only thing you need to craft donuts is donut mix made of razor grain and sugar bombs. And to think I felt slightly like a cheater for using that smokable cigarette mod, which had the same buff for cigarettes. Luckily Todd decided to give his blessings to such OP consumables and now I can feed myself with donuts and cigarettes and it makes me win all the time, just, just like in real life, very, very immersive. 
more special scavenger stations were placed in Red Rocket. I was in such a hurry to finally start working on my restaurant that I actually used some prefabs for housing at the Red Rocket. I can't recall the last time I was this lazy with a settlement building. A donut fryer and a coffee maker were built in my house and there was much rejoicing. And even more rejoicing because all the building had pushed me to level 15 and it was the time to save Ada and unlock the robot workbench. It's unlikely I will have the time and resources to use it for anything else than painting Cosworth and Ada pink, but I think it's well worth risking my life. Once again, I was convinced my first fight with the mechanist's robots would leave me wrecked and scared and traumatized, but once again, the proper use of VATS and the Ball of Doom was enough to prevail. As a matter of fact, it encouraged me to try a few more adventures before my restaurant is built, especially that I want to get the vault build set so I can have a cute little casino section with slot machines. So I need to reach level 20, so I finally went to the library. Yes, everything else was just getting in the way of this particular mission so far. I work here. Let me in. Please provide your six-digit employee ID number. Yes, right. My ID number is, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I did very little fighting there, leaving most of it to the local robots and my own robot. But on the bright side, I finally got that intelligence bubblehead and realized in a flash of revelatory excitement what the security in my restaurant should look like. Protect and serve. Then I thought if my security will be comprised of robots, I should probably get the drinking buddy too. So off to Shamrock Tap House with me. Once again, I was terrified I was going to get wrecked. And I was absolutely right. The boss raider in the top house had a filthy evil harpoon gun capable of taking me down in one shot. He also had the annoying tendency to wait for me near the entrance with a significant high ground advantage on his side. I backtracked to Sanctuary to grab some resources useful for weapon mods, then to Diamond City to buy the old faithful, because with some mods it's a really nice weapon for sneak kills, and it also is quite efficient in bats. My third or fourth try was finally successful, and I celebrated the demise of that raider boss with a bottle of vodka and a donut. The next stage before booting up the drinking buddy was to deal with a family of mole rats, but this time it was me who had the high ground. So these pests went down in flames with my maniacal laughter as the official soundtrack for their last breath. Finally, the robot was turned on and sent to Starlight Drive-In, which I chose as the location for my restaurant. I decided to head south towards Vault 88 and grab the remaining levels required to start its quest on the way, for example by gunner hunting. <laughs> I scored a really nice headshot on a gunner commander at one point. I am proud of this moment because I remained cool and collected despite the odds being against me, and my perk choices actually paid off for once since my current sneak level was at this point just enough for most enemies to focus exclusively on Ada and Inspirational made Ada capable of withstanding the enemy fire up for a bit longer, thus letting me to approach some of the scary combat situation with a bit more cool. But my boosted self-esteem was about to plummet again and I was put in my place really painfully by the raiders at Vault 88. It was hell. These mofos had impeccable perception, and open combat in an open space is the worst scenario for me, even worse that Ada turned out to be mostly useless in her current unmodified form, so I had to backtrack to Sanctuary, take Codsworth with me, unlock some armor and make myself some ballistic weave. Yes, by the way, I decided at that point I am not doing railroad quests just for the weave, I use a mod instead, which grants me a slightly weaker but questless ballistic weave available simply with the armorer perk ranks. Sue me if you want, but I most certainly am not putting off my restaurant business venture for much longer. Anyways, on my way back to Vault 88, I bought a Syringer rifle in Diamond City because I was finally able to pull off that one deadly and nearly game-breaking combo. Well, with a Syringer rifle, some mute fruit and nuka cola, you can use the Syringer to completely pacify living enemies. Non-hostile creatures won't actively search for you, making your sneak much more effective, allowing you to get close without detection. 
This means with Pickpocket 2, I can move close to the temporarily docile raiders and plant explosives in their pockets. Except it won't be any actual explosives, it's going to be caltrops. Due to a bug or a feature only Todd knows, caltrops kill absolutely everything regardless of HP when placed in somebody's inventory via Pickpocket 2. Basically, Syringer Rifle plus Pax Syringes plus Sneak plus Pickpocket 2 plus Caltrops equals insta-kill of everything, well, pickpocketable, every living pickpocketable thing. This amazing technique allowed me to deal with the buffed raiders of Vault 88 with relative ease. The ghouls inside the vault were a joke, unable to find me before they were downed, and Overseer Barstow was exiled because I only care about her blueprints and don't care about her at all. I should have stayed in the vault to scrap everything, but I was too stupid to realize how stupid I can sometimes be, and had no idea how much resources I could need for the restaurant. Speaking of which, with my Slocum Joe's blueprints and the slot machines from the vault, I was finally ready to kickstart the restaurant project. And the consequences of my very special brain were soon made apparent when I discovered that my cool floor design from the snap and build mod I wanted to use in my restaurant requires a shitload of cloth, and the entire building may need tons of concrete, steel, wood and even glass. So I left once again to do some shopping. In fact, I spent all my 7000 or so caps on shipments and it was still not enough. A word of advice, if you are going to do this at home, start with a small restaurant and then if you are playing for a bit longer, expand it gradually, because the multi-story beautiful building with fancy lights and decoration took away all my resources and quite a few hours of my life. In fact, I had to backtrack to Sanctuary to make sure there is maybe some wood left I haven't scrapped so far, and there was, and it made me unreasonably furious that it was so little. I had to go back to Vault 88 at this point to activate all the workshops in all the sections and scrap absolutely everything I could from all those caves. Not much wood there, but a buttload of steel and concrete. And also some relatively interesting adventures, especially that I was fresh out of pack syringes. <clears throat> I made some from the local resources though, before facing the glowing Deathclaw. That ancient beast had absolutely no response to the magic of the syringer and high sneak. And and my violent pea shooter turned out to be the final nail in its coffin, as it allowed me to cripple both of the beast's legs, allowing me in turn to execute a series of headshots and the death blow was no more. Then sanctuary again, because the vault tech rep runs a store with shipments out there, and generally a lot more trading, selling everything I could, including some of my spare legendaries, magazines, all the water in sanctuary workshop, and much more just to buy the shipments. Luckily I was able to produce quite a lot of fertilizer at this point, therefore a lot of jet, therefore money. While all the trade was in progress, I also decided to finish off my animal farms. Three rat stack cages, three yaogwai cages, three deathclaw cages. A lot of expensive food I will be able to sell for profit one day anyway. With all that prep done, my building project finally got some steam. I did the thing all pretentious restaurants of the early 2000s did and made the kitchen open in the middle of my main restaurant room, surrounded by fully transparent glass, so my spoiled pretentious customers can spy on my employees at all times. Then I remembered uh, tier 4 traders are a thing in the game. There are unique named settlers you can meet in the commonwealth who, when assigned to a tier 3 shop of a proper type will convert it to a tier 4 shop, with extra barter caps and some rare items for sale. The problem is, the dude intended as a master chef of the game who can give you a tier 4 restaurant is, uh, well, he is buggy as hell. Buggy to the point of disappearance, actually. I don't think I have ever met him in all my playthroughs, so instead I used a mod, Recruitable Settlers, which adds another set of unique recruitable settlers, including some tier 4 merchants. I wouldn't be happy without the best available chef manning the counter of my dream eatery. Sadly, it turned out I had to do a rather lengthy quest of the big dig to actually be able to recruit her. You know what? Let's. I found a silencer for my 10mm on my way to Vault 88 or from Vault 88 at some point, so this should be a nice and easy adventure. Spoiler alert, 
it wasn't, not exactly. As soon as the legendary Mirelurk took down Codsworth, I needed to run like crazy, frantically trying to abuse the silly pathfinding to my advantage. Luckily, I remembered to stuff my face with donuts and vodka before the fight, so I prevailed! Bobby the quest giver is possibly the most annoying and most obviously treacherous person in Commonwealth. Well, well, Preston Garvey is the most annoying, but much less treacherous, and I felt really icky when breaking the law, but much must be sacrificed for business. She wanted me to break a convict out of prison, but yet again I was able to use my charm to convince some guards to let the convict go. And the Bethesda sucks crowd thinks you don't have many choices in this game. You absolutely do. You absolutely have a lot of choices if you carefully and painstakingly choose to do only the narrow selection of quests with choices in them. Hmm. Going right back to the big dig, even though there was a few close calls, once again I managed to win by the means of sugar-filled rage and cowering behind Codsworth. Then I sided with Hancock's people, convinced Bobby to flee without her loot and got rewarded with one of the best weapons in the game as all explosive rapid-fire weapons are insanely powerful. Pity I am not using big guns, and this is most likely my last adventure before the restaurant is ready. And since the game has been consistently refusing to give me a proper hat that would suit my style, I used a mod and then a console command to finally get my freaking hat. Finally, my excellent chef was hired, I had a few thousand caps again and was able to really get the build in Starlight Drive-In going, starting with electricity. Wiring the entire building was pure pain, as it always is. After a real-life all-nighter of building, shipment shopping, sending excess settlers from everywhere else to Starlight and playing dress-ups with them, my awesome restaurant was finally finished. Well, okay, two floors were finished, I'm not showing you the third floor, it's just beds. Anyway, just after achieving level 34 and with perks looking something like this, my dream was fulfilled and I had a beautiful money-making place. Of course, I could have done more to make it efficient as a source of caps and happiness, but why would I do that? It's the, it's the end of the playthrough. I could place all the traders close to each other or closer so that the settlers generate the proximity caps easily, or I could simply use more merchants. I still have quite a few of them, a clothier and a general store pretending to be waiters or receptionists. What was truly needed uh, and required to do it smoothly were the farming settlement allowing me to use food, water and jet as source of money. The many cages, well, they were built mostly for the fun of it, but I guess a death close take is both a good food in survival, a nice bath, long lasting bath outside of survival and in survival, and a decent commodity for sale. I was able to to sell it for approximately 100 caps per item. Charisma slash agility was imperfect for combat purposes, but uh, I hope you noticed it was mostly manageable. I would even make my standard build video guide for our girl Evelyn here, but I already have a very similar character in a guide. Link, hopefully, if I don't forget about it, in the description. I think you could easily achieve the same results in 20 levels or so if you really put your back to it. I just got carried away with build building and the adventuring. Happy to see Evelyn overseeing a nice little bastion of civilization and consumerism in this wild, wild wasteland, though. Pity about Sean, but you know, you, you can't have it all. Hope you had fun, maybe even learned something about the game. Leave a like, subscribe and comment if you did, or even if you have questions or if you just are in the mood to. Every reason is a good reason for guiding me through the stormy depths of the YouTube algorithm. We will see each other again, guys. Bye, bye, bye.